The Canon R7, one of the very few R camera systems I'm a little unsure about, and I'll tell you why. When it was announced, it came out right around the same time as the Fujifilm X-H2S. Fujifilm is known for APS-C and medium format respectively, but APS-C first and foremost. They have the lens lineup. They have the technology. They have the years of experience. Canon with the R system, for the most part, there's not many RF lenses. And how does the R7 fare in that regard? Is it worth you investing into this camera system? What's it like compared to a Fujifilm? We're gonna talk about that in this video, so let's get down to it. So before we kick things off, big thanks to Canon Singapore for providing the camera and the lenses. Having said that, these are my thoughts and my thoughts only. And as I talked about the R7, I was a little bit unsure about. Now, this comes in at a $1,500 price point, US dollars, mind you. So you are going to have some sacrifices made to the body design and everything else and some features that we're used to seeing from the R5 and the R3. Case in point, the body feels a little bit more plastic. It's not as robust as the R5 and the R3 for that matter. It is smaller. Um, the buttons and some of the dials do feel a little bit more plasticky. They don't feel as solid. But I would say for the most part, for a $1,500 camera, Canon's done a pretty good job with this. Um, the specs inside of this, I mean, you've seen it from other, other videos already. I'm not gonna go through everything. It's a 32.5 APS-C sensor in this. Uh, you've got the same autofocusing system as the Canon R3 for the most part. 4K 60, uh, you've got HLG, PQ, something, we'll put it right here, what exactly it is. Down samples from 7K. You get up to 30 frames per second in electronic shutter and then 15 frames on mechanical shutter. And you've got a 1.5 million dot um, display and a 2.36 million dot EVF, which is surprising in 2022 that Canon would give us not even a 3.69, but 2.36. And you do notice the difference, especially in lower light situations. Bright daylight, it's fine. Lower light, it looks grainy, looks a little bit pixelated, not optimal. Again, $1,500 price point, but Canon, I feel personally you could have given us at least a 3.6 million dot EVF, especially for APS-C and for birding and wildlife photographers that are gonna utilize this camera for that 1.6 crop that you get in APS-C, that extra resolution would help them greatly. Anyway, let's talk about a little bit what it's like to use. And when I was using uh, this camera, I was also testing out the X-H2S for, that mo for the most part. And the X-H2S from Fujifilm is their flagship camera at, the, at this point in time for the X-Series lineup. It is up to 40 frames per second. It does have a little bit lower resolution at 24 megapixels versus 32.5 that's in the Canon R7, but you have a 5.76 million dot EVF. You have a, an improved autofocusing system, more robust body, um, it has 6K video. Uh, there's a lot of great things in that camera system. Plus, the lens lineup is designed for APS-C. Whereas this camera, you've got this 18 to 150 here that is an APS-C lens, and they have a few other uh, RF APS-C lenses out there, but for the most part, you're going to be adapting full frame lenses to this camera, which means you have to take in that 1.6 crop factor when you are using the system. So the 2870 I have in that bag, I'll be taking out in just a little bit. We're going up to the top of the cloud forest here at Gardens by the Bay to take some photos. It's not gonna be 2870. It's gonna be more like 4090 thereabouts. So those are a couple things that gave me reservations on the R7. But anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go upstairs to the cloud forest, go on the bridge, take some photos with the 2870, this kit lens here as well. We're gonna do some video samples, go into Lightroom, and I'll come back with my final thoughts. I mean, using the R7, I have to say, some improvements I really like on this camera. Case in point, accessing video now is not a convoluted system where you gotta press the info and go back into video versus photo. It's on the switch now, so you have off, on, and go right into video mode, which is great. And I think uh, Canon's realizing people are shooting more video, as they are with the R5C and especially the R3 and everything else, but they're making it a lot easier for people to use that. Maybe this is more of a uh, entry-level camera and they're trying to make that more user-friendly, but they should do this on all their camera systems. I don't know why they didn't do this before, but it, I, I appreciate that. Also, we have this new dial uh, joystick around the dial here, which is really interesting. I like this as well. It takes some getting used to because I'm used to having more of a horizontal dial versus a sort of vertical dial that you're turning around and you get your joystick in the middle. But once you do get used to it, it's pretty intuitive and I appreciate that. The size, I got larger hands. The size for me, it's a little small. My pinky doesn't have a home. No home for my pinky. And I don't know if there is an external grip for this as of yet, doesn't seem to be, but you know what, my poor pinky by itself now. But uh, anyway, take a quick photo of this famous Instagram spot here. And then off and walking. So we're gonna test out the image stabilization here with the R7. So 
I'm gonna shoot this waterfall here. F-22, one over four seconds, handheld. Let's see how we fare. Sharp. It's sharp. Let's shoot this shot here. Let's kind of cut through the water here. So it's hard for me to get. I need an NG filter for this. This is one over five, F20. This is impressive. This image stabilization is amazing. One over five, F20, ISO 100, handheld with one hand because I'm holding this in my other hand and the image is sharp. Another feature on the R7 is HDRPQ. Um, another format that might not be compatible with all your computer systems, so do check it out before you start utilizing it. But basically what it does is it gives you a lot of dynamic range in your image. Uh, and it's pretty good. Kind of gives you more of a flatter feel uh, to your image. And then of course you can grade it or when you put it into Lightroom or Capture One, it looks decent, but out of camera, it kind of looks a little bit, yeah, kind of like what you get out of a smartphone, but nowadays, that's what people like, right? Right. Also, there's panoramic mode as well. Um, I'm trying to figure out where that's at here on this. The IS system, you just kind of move left and right. Try again and keep camera moving precisely in the direction shown. So it's a bit picky. This thing is a bit picky and because I'm on a 28 and the crop factor, I'm not getting this super wide shot. Let me try one more time. Yeah, it's pretty good, not bad at all. Not bad at all. And of course, you can go all the way to the end or you can stop it however you want to do it. So it stitches it up for you. So if you want a panoramic shot, I don't know why you really can't put panoramic on Instagram or Facebook, but if you want it for some reason, it's in the camera now. I mean, this camera is impressive. It does really good. And of course, you have to give a lot of credit to the RF lenses from Canon, which are fantastic lenses. Bitingly sharp, uh, great rendering, zero chromatic aberration, distortion. I mean, they build some of the best mirrorless lenses on the market. So paired with this 32.5 APS-C sensor, this is a very formidable camera out there. Again, now, if you're comparing it to other APS-C cameras on the market, if you want to compare it to Sony, Sony and Canon are kind of in the same boat. They don't have a lot of native APS-C lenses. So you rely on either third-party uh, vendors, for Sony for that matter, but Canon not so much, or you rely on adapting full-frame uh, lenses to the APS-C sensor, which means that crop factor comes into play. This is where I think Fujifilm still has the edge with the X-H2S and the X-Series over the R7, is that they have a lot more native lenses, primes, zooms, the full array of APS-C lenses that are going to take advantage of the size of the camera, the weight, and balance it out a little bit better than what we're seeing from Canon. Now, of course, I've got this 2870 F2, which is a massive lens, but even unless you want to do the 50 1.2 or the 85 1.2, those are very large lenses. And to this small body, I don't know exactly how they'll match up for a lot of people out there. Again, this is something that Canon probably in the near future will adapt lenses if the R7, the R10 do very well. They'll probably come out with more smaller lenses, you know, 1.4, 1.8 F2s out there to sort of compensate for the size, and I hope they do but it depends on how much they want to invest in the system or are they just looking at this R7 as a, a B camera for wildlife and birding photographers or sporting photographers out there that want that extra length. They'll put it onto a monopod and they'll just shoot that way and they don't care. I don't know, it remains to be seen. But in terms of video, I think it's a great camera for vloggers out there, for YouTubers out there. You can be very happy with this. Photographers, you're gonna like the image quality out of it and especially some of the new features. So I do like the R7, but they need some lenses badly. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the camera. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. We've got always new content coming your way. Uh, like this video, hit that notification bell. Stay safe and I'll chat to you soon. Take care.